I was thinking about this not long ago, like how many people can truly talk to themselves inside their heads and say, okay, I have accomplished what I dream of one day. I truly did it. Yurir Rodriguez. I think Yurir can be a much tougher fight than Islam. For Volk, so he's talking about the styles. Have right. you seen Yair Rodriguez fight? No. Yair Rodriguez is one of the wildest motherfuckers that's ever fought in MMA. Yair's fucking dangerous, dude. He's dangerous. Maybe Alexander's thinking the same thing. Like, hey, how is this dude going to beat me? I, I can't imagine he kind of has that mindset, but still. Upon his UFC debut in 2014, Yair Rodriguez was instantly labeled a top featherweight prospect. He was tall and rangy, and his striking talents were damn near peerless. For three years, Yair remained undefeated in the UFC, showcasing his orthodox and unorthodox brilliance. But then he ran into Frankie Edgar at UFC 211 and suffered a horrendous beatdown. What we saw is the, the classic style of the wrestler being able to take down the kicker and dominate him and smash him. For two full rounds, Yair was mauled on the ground by the former champion, and the ringside physician had to intervene. He lost by doctor stoppage, and predictably, most people turn on him. Of course they did. He was never really that good, you know? Before the fight, I said no matter what happens, Yair is going to be a superstar. Just not yet, you know? Hype train derailed. Totaled, in fact. But this is exactly what Frankie should have done to Yair. Frankie broke him. He went running. Probably beats a lot of these top five guys, except for Frankie. Except for yet. Here we are, days away from UFC 290, and the main event features Yair as the interim champion. I mean, here you are, this, this rising star, you know, everybody loves you, and then you, you have a disappointing defeat, and then now you got people saying you're ducking. Truth be told, his UFC future at one point did look sort of bleak, but El Pantero rebounded and kept silencing his critics with every octagon performance. And here are the top three examples. Come along and you'll see why this dude is considered the most lethal challenger to Alexander the Great. Number one, the Korean zombie. After the loss to Frankie Edgar, Yair was away for more than a year and a lot of shit happened. He was briefly linked to a bout with Zabit, but that got canned. Later on, as a complete shock, it was announced by the promotion that Yair was released from his contract due to his refusal to fight. Well, it's been, it's been honestly pretty tough, pretty crazy for me this last uh, year and a half almost, that I've been um, out of activity in the UFC. But uh, I'm pretty happy to be here now, headlining this event. But he was brought back mere weeks later and finally had a fight scheduled against the Korean zombie. I'm gonna go with the zombie, especially the longer this goes. I imagine elevation, the pace that Yair fights at, and the short notice, I'm not sure how much his cardio uh, will hold up as good as it is. There were a lot of questions about Yair heading into fight night 139, with this being his comeback fight after the brutal loss. He took that loss hard. So I'm anxious to see where each guy stands. The majority of the people sided with TKZ, as he was still dangerous and a bit too much for Yair, a failed prospect. This clash was slated as the main event of the card, and in the very first round, Yair made a statement. The Edgar defeat was a setback, not the end. Yair already had a few fight of the night bonuses, but this was on another level, and for five rounds, the two featherweights put together one hell of a fight. Wild, entertaining, and competitive, but the veteran seemed a step ahead of Yair. The Korean zombie was on his way to a decision victory, but in the very last second of the final minute of the fifth round, Yair struck. Yeah, literally. Oh, it was an elbow! Oh my god! A wild elbow in the last exchange connected on the jaw, and the zombie was knocked unconscious. Oh, Holy elbow. oh shit! Oh, lined Holy up. shit! Oh my god! At 4 minutes and 59 seconds of the 5th round, this marked the latest knockout in UFC history. And just like that, a lot of questions were answered. And I promise you guys, I won't let you guys down. Never. Rodriguez was still in there, and this dude was capable of finishing anyone, at any time, and from any angle. Number 2. Max Holloway Despite putting on the fight of the night against the Korean zombie, Yair's popularity sort of dwindled. The first Jeremy Stevens fight ended due to an eye poke, and Yair's attitude post-fight didn't do him any favors. 
He rectified the mistake in the very next fight when he rematched Stevens in yet another fight of the night that bettered his reputation. But then he sat out for two years and maybe the UFC was upset because for his next fight, he was going to be fed to Max Holloway. The once dominant featherweight champion was back in the hunt after two back-to-back -back losses to Volkanovski and after the Calvin Cater obliteration, Holloway was the last guy you wanted to face, especially if you were out for two years. If you're Yair Rodriguez, you don't want to let Max Holloway get, get running downhill. You don't want him to get a lead on you and you have to try to chase him. The former champion opened up as a substantial favorite and the Yair haters gathered around to witness yet another bloodbath. And while it was, both of them bled. Max Holloway is one of the finest strikers in MMA today, but even the blessed one had trouble dealing with the kicks of Rodriguez, especially in the first round. Holloway came back stronger in the following rounds, mixing up boxing with takedowns to score points, but Yair didn't make it any easier and pushed Holloway to his limits. And in the last round, he struck again, this time with an elbow and Holloway was cut above his right eye. You don't see a battered Max Holloway too often, and while the former champ got the decision nod, Yair Rodriguez was a winner as well, to go from Jeremy Stevens to Max Holloway with a two-year layoff and perform the way that he did, insanity. Good guy, yeah, I'm sure. This is what the sport's all about, bro. That settled it. This guy was a force in the featherweight division, and despite the loss, a championship opportunity was not too far away. Number three, Josh Emmett. A quick but controversial victory over Brian Ortega pushed Yair to the very top of the title picture, and with a featherweight champion out in a bid for double title glory, the UFC arranged an interim championship fight. With a string of impressive performances over the last few years, Yair Rodriguez was a no-brainer, and the other guy was Josh Emmett. I don't care who I fight, where I fight, when I fight, I will be there. They don't even have to ask me. Emmett was up there in age, but he was one of the most dangerous 45-pounders on the roster with legitimate one-punch knockout power and a pretty decent ground game as well. I prepared the best of my ability and I'm just gonna go in there and execute my game plan and uh, I'm gonna beat him to the punch. As the co-main event of Volkanovski versus Mahachev, these two featherweights met in the middle of the octagon to decide the interim king. Yair didn't waste a second, opening the fights with flashy body kicks and fast boxing combinations, but Emmett was a punch away and he reminded us all after landing a brutal right hand that dropped Yair near the end of the first. Josh secured top position, but Yair kept attacking off his back with elbows and submissions attempts and survived to the next round. In the second, Yair came guns blazing and styled on his opponent. A flying knee landed flush, but somehow Emmett endured and brought the fight to the ground, only to get battered by elbows and submitted by a triangle choke. Wait, what? From getting beat up by Frankie Edgar on the ground to submitting Josh Emmett with a triangle choke, it was another impressive performance from the surging contender, and with the interim belt wrapped around his waist, Gary Rodriguez had finally made it. He'd come a long way since 2018, and he was ready. And now accomplishing that, this other dream, which was being uh, the UFC world champion, I don't know how to explain in the words. That's sufficient proof right there. And I'm sure you've come to understand why Yair Rodriguez is where he is right now. El Pantera did have a rocky few years and a few personal mistakes didn't help him. But the zombie fight was the turning point and the Max Holloway war was the breakthrough. I think that the, the toughest fight that, uh, that Volk will have is, it is Yair. With his brutal striking style and top tier cardio, Yair Rodriguez had stunned the MMA world and he has earned a shot at one of the pound-for-pound -pound best fighters in the world, Alexander Volkanovsky. I think that game, that style, the flashy kicks and things like that, the hard kicks, that's gonna be very problematic for a guy like Volkanovsky. Just remember, his kicks are a hell to deal with, his submissions ability is just as dangerous, and he can finish you at any time. It's, it's gonna be a weird fight, a very fun fight, and one that I, I, I look forward to as a fan. And that is why the undisputed champion himself considers Yair Rodriguez his most dangerous opponent yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd look at Yaya yeah, as more of a dangerous opponent for me than in Islam. Because of that crazy, erratic sort of, uh, look, always looking for a finish, you know what I mean? And the striking and unpredictable uh, sort of uh, behavior. And that is why you'd be a fool to doubt him.